thank you so much for uh, attending our information session that we're uh, holding today about uh, summer uh, registration uh, and uh, some of the other associated programming uh, for uh, summer uh, classes uh, here at Stockton University. Uh, my name is uh, Bob Heinrich and I am the Chief Enrollment Management Officer overseeing the Division of Enrollment Management. Uh, and I'm joined by a few of my colleagues today uh, Dr. Rob Gregg, uh, who is the Dean of the School of Education. I'm Dean of the School of General Studies. See that, Rob? I changed your title. Thanks. Uh, thanks, man. And then we also have uh, uh, Dr. Steve Redwanski, uh, who is our Executive Director of Residential Life. Uh, Mr. Peter Barada, who is the uh, Chief Planning Officer and uh, Deputy Chief of Staff. And Natisha Peterson from our uh, career education and development uh, department within student affairs. Uh, and we are all here to provide you, um, you know, a bit of information, but then at the same time, uh, answer any questions that you might have. Uh, today's session will be recorded, and then we will have a follow-up session on April 14th, following the second preceptural advising day. Uh, so Pete, would you mind going to the next slide, please? So what we're going to discuss is to provide a little bit more information about, uh, you know, the course uh, options, uh, the when the different sessions are held, and some strategies for you to consider about course selection. Uh, we'll then talk about how to fund and pay for your courses and what financial aid options are available. Dr. Redwanski will go into our housing options uh, that uh, you can take advantage of. Uh, Ms. Peterson will cover uh, internships and employment, and then we will end with uh, Q&A. Uh, so at this point, I want to turn it over to Dr. Gregg. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you, Dr. Henrik. Um, so uh, there are so many reasons why you should uh, consider taking summer courses, and I want to go through um, a number of them. But, uh, but you should know to start off with that uh, the Curriculum is made up of a large number of courses, about 375 to choose from currently. And these are program courses. So program, the courses that will help you towards uh, completing your program, but then also electives, which means uh, G courses and add some distance courses that you also need to complete uh, your degree. So in, in essence, uh, whatever course you take in the summer, you will be able to put it into your, your worksheets and move towards uh, curriculum more, more speedily, uh, either at some distance or a, a crucial G course that may be difficult to get during the year or, or a program course. Uh, and there's a lot of flexibility because the, mobility, the modalities are um, generally uh, online, uh, as you can see here, here in this chart, primarily online, uh, with some some hybrid, which means that the, you, you'll have some meetings, but a large amount of the work will be um, uh, uh, through Blackboard and so forth. And then there are a few that are face-to-face. -face. But what this means is that there's a great deal of flexibility for you uh, to make a schedule that really works for you as you, you're doing other things during during the summer and you can fit it in with your jobs or, or even, even uh, vacationing at times when you're uh, able to uh, get online still. And you should also note that in terms of the online courses, primarily these are asynchronous, which means that again, you can make your own schedule. You'll be able to, you'll have to follow week by week uh, instructions from your, um, from, from your professor, but it's not like you'll have to be somewhere Monday, Wednesday at a particular time. So primarily these on, uh, they're online, asynchronous. There are some synchronous courses, so you need to look out for this uh, when you're um, scheduling um, uh, your, your, or you're registering for the courses. But primarily, they're, they're asynchronous, and so they give you the greatest amount of flexibility um, to, to help you. So maybe you can move to the next slide here. Okay, as I said, the, the, a lot of program courses and, and one, there are several reasons why you might want to um, think about uh, registering for summer courses. There may be a, a program course that you uh, had difficulty with and you need to repeat it. And, and so summer is a good time to do it. But some, sometimes those program courses aren't, aren't available in the summer. But nevertheless, if you get something else out of the way when you have to, to redo that course during the year, uh, you won't have such a schedule crunch. So 
uh, it's basically a great benefit to keep you uh, up up to speed in terms of uh, and on schedule to 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 graduate within the most timely uh, amount of you know, the most you know the most speedily uh, range schedule possible. But there's clearly also a reasons to take it because a large number of these courses are G courses, and they're they're often courses that uh, overlap with some of the other requirements that you have. So. As you know, there are W2 requirements, Q2 requirements, historical um, studies a requirement, to interdisciplinary requirement, values and arts. And these uh, are often available. And sometimes you'll get a, a, a G course, a GIS course that you have to take that will have a, a W2, a Q2, and an A attached to it. And so you can get a lot of these different requirements out and that will help you uh, to, to graduate uh, quickly. Um, so, it, and in, in some instances, you, it might even be great to, to get ahead because uh, if you were to take, for example, four of these courses over a two year period, that's essentially a, a whole semester that you've got out of the way uh, and you've, you've um, you know, you've moved forward towards graduation and that reduces the costs that you might have during the academic year in terms of uh, being on campus and so forth. So. Um, so as I said, you can retake courses you had trouble with. Uh, and the other things to look out for are that you're going to get a little bit more uh, close attention from the faculty, because often these courses uh, are smaller than during the year. Now, you might think, well, during the year, they're face to face and um, in the summer, they're, they're online. And so I won't get as, as much attention. But frequently, you'll be getting a lot of uh, attention. There may be some Zoom meetings that you'll have with, with the faculty. Uh, and they will, will have fewer uh, students to respond to, so they can really uh, give you your work a, a lot of close attention. So there's a lot of different advantages. And then in, uh, the potential for independent studies and internships. Uh, there, there are a lot of these uh, out there uh, that can be useful, and, and uh, Ms. Peterson is going to talk a little bit more about them. But uh, this also can align with the fact that, you know, you might want to use the summer to, to, to think about uh, fi filling out your um, your uh, your you know your uh, workload and 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 really making yourself more attractive to an employer by by taking a, a minor, for example, uh, you could do an internship in the Holocaust Resource Center, or if you know say perhaps you're an, a nurse, you might want to learn a second uh, a second language to help you get an uh, get employment. So a lot of different minors, uh, cannabis studies um uh holocaust and genocide studies uh holistic health um disability studies all of these minors uh can make you seem more attractive and make you more attractive uh definitely to to a potential employer we hear about this a lot from our uh graduates and from from local employers that they really found um our uh, students attractive uh when they came to interview them because they had more than just their major. So this is something to think about and you can experiment in the summer. So there's a lot of good, good things that can come to you uh, by doing this. So next slide, maybe. And uh, um, here, what you really need to bear in mind is that there, as I said, there are a lot of things that can um, you can benefit from in terms of uh, the, taking summer courses, but you really wanna be thinking about doing this with the advice from your preceptor, because you have these, the, the opportunity if you're a, a freshman or a, a first year or a sophomore uh, to meet on, on March 30th, or oh, sorry, uh, on April 7th and juniors and seniors, I think March, uh, uh, meeting on March 30th. Now your advisor, your preceptor can really give you a great assist in terms of taking the particular courses that will, that will fit into um, your your requirements in terms of uh, graduation. So think about meeting with them. Um, but the what you should know is that there's a lot of flexibility in terms of the summer sessions. There are two six week sessions, uh, and then there's one longest session that's ten weeks, and then there's one that's really good for independent studies and uh, internships, which is the the, the twelve week session that goes the whole summer. 
Now, what this means is that you can take a course in, in session one and a, a course in session three, both six weeks courses, and that they, they won't be overlapping. So you can devote your full, full attention to them, or you can mix and match and you could take, you know, more courses. So, but the point being that you don't get a crunch where you've got, you know, four or five courses in, in, in one session, that would be very difficult for you to, to, to uh, complete. So think about it, work with your advisor, um, do keep in good contact with your advisor because he or she can be a great assistance to you throughout your career at Stockton, helping you with the summer, but then also when you're applying for uh, jobs down the road. So work with your preceptor and they will help you immeasurably. Next one. And I move back to Dr. Heinrich. Yes, thank you, Dr. Greg. Um, so just a couple of, uh, you know, slides related to, you know, payment options. I think it's important to note that uh, summer bills will go live on Thursday, uh, April 2nd. Uh, it's actually, I'm sorry, that's a Friday, Friday, April 2nd. Uh, and the payment plan options also open. So you have, you know, kind of two options available to you. You can pay your summer bill completely in full or you can uh, structure it uh, based on uh, three payment plans with the first payment being due April 16th, the second May 17th, and then the third on June 14th. Uh, there also uh, is a, uh, you know, a deadline of May 3rd. So if you're looking to just make it as one lump sum, uh, you do have to have payment arrangements uh, set up um, by uh, May 3rd. Uh, you know, to avoid uh, potentially being dropped um, for non-payment uh, from, from a class. There are also other options available to you to finance your summer classes uh, in addition to just the payment plan. Um, you know, students who qualify for federal Pell grants, um, you know, can utilize Pell during the summer in addition to the fall and the spring uh, semesters. And in fact, the financial aid department has already reached out to all of our uh, federal Pell eligible students to let them know that um, they have that eligibility. But if you're unsure or if you have any questions, uh, you can certainly reach out to the financial aid department directly and they'd be very happy to assist you to confirm uh, the eligibility of, of those funds um, to apply towards uh, a summer tuition and, uh, and, and fee bill. Uh, the other option is, is your federal loans. And if you didn't use all of your uh, loan eligibility for the fall and spring as part of the academic year, if there's a residual or surplus uh, available amount uh, uh, accessible to you, that can be applied towards a balance of your uh, summer uh, bills. In addition, uh, you know, you, there are um, other loans that you can apply for. Um, and on our uh, summer financial aid page, uh, we include links for the private alternative loans. Uh, there's also a um, uh, student uh, in our, or parent plus loan option uh, as well. And then as I mentioned already, the, the payment plans. Uh, but there is a wealth of information on the website, as well as within the Go Stockton portal uh, related to all the payment options, or you can obviously contact the financial aid office or the bursar office uh, directly. Uh, I now want to turn it over to Dr. Redwanski, and we'll go to the next slide, and he will discuss some of the housing options. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Uh, I figured I was a little late to it, but my background is actually one of the oceanfront um, Atlantic City apartments. So you can get a view of what it's actually like to live there. Uh, I'm an 05 alumni. Uh, when I went to Stockton, I not that I didn't love my family, but I never went home again. I stayed here, including in summer housing, uh, all four years. And just to echo what Dr. Greg said, you know, students should really go see their preceptor. Uh, my preceptor was, doc, or was Bill Daly. He's since retired. Um, but that was one of the best my semester every year, getting to meet with him and plan out my year. And um, I, he, he challenged me to take microeconomics uh, one summer, and I did. And I was able to graduate early because of uh, summer classes. So please, again, meet with your preceptor and consider um, summer classes. And one of the other things we really wanted to highlight is students can take two classes or two class, three classes for the price of two if they're undergrad and live in Atlantic City. And 
that wasn't available to me at that time, but if it was, I would certainly take advantage of it. Plus all of our summer housing is in Atlantic City, which wasn't available to me as a student either. Um, for folks who don't know, the beaches in Atlantic City are free. Um, so there's no beach tags. Um, you can just walk onto the beach with whatever you have, sit down, enjoy the, the sun and the ocean, and then um, go back to the residence hall when you're done. So um, our rates for the summer are $25 a day, which is a, about a 50% discount compared to what we charge for fall and summer housing. Um, we do ask students to stay for a minimum of 30 days. If there's any questions about the length of stay, um, you can email housing at stockton.edu. Um, and we do allow students from other colleges and universities to stay with us at a rate of $35 a day. We just ask that if they are gonna stay with us, it's for an academic purpose. So a lot of students do have internships in the area from other colleges and universities as well. Can we go to the next slide, please? So we also wanted to highlight our 12 month contract, which is available to our current residential students. It provides an additional $600 savings. So if you combine the 12 month contract with the uh, deal for three classes for the price of two, you really have the opportunity um, to stay on campus for the entire summer and uh, save some money while you're taking classes as well. The due date's April 2nd, which is right around the corner. But again, if you have any questions or um, are curious more about the 12 month student and you're a current residential student who wants to stay the entire summer, please again, reach out to housing at stockton.edu and we'll be able to provide you more information. We're gonna go to the next slide now. And this is where we get into all the good stuff about the amenities of um, what it's like to live on campus. And so all of our units in Atlantic City have a stove, full size fridge and lots of cabinets. And uh, I, folks probably don't know this and you may not care either, but the cabinets are slam proof. So you cannot slam them. It has a, a gear on it that prevents you from doing it, which extends their life, which is nice too. Um, but what I like to say about Atlantic City is we designed it based on what the students told us they liked about campus. And so we combined everything about the Galloway campus and combined it into Atlantic City. And so there's a stove, it's an electric stove and oven. There's a full size fridge. All the rooms are air conditioned. I'm not sure if we still have to say that, but all of, our, all of our facilities at Stockton are fully air conditioned. Students do have a degree of control with the thermostat. Um, all of the rooms are fully furnished. Um, one thing, again, we learned from our students is that these rooms in Atlantic City, you can design them however you want. The kitchen table, for example, is on wheels, big casters. And so you can move it around the apartment and uh, do it wherever you want. The bedrooms, the beds are twin extra long beds like we have in Galloway. You get a desk and a chair. And again, one of the things students really told us is they like to be able to customize their room. So your nightstand is on wheels and it can actually slide under the bed if you'd like it to. So again, um, we wanna provide you maximum flexibility and really designing and feeling comfortable in your space. Uh, we have laundry on every floor at no additional cost. Um, there's public computers and computer labs available. Um, we also offer for anyone who stays free parking in our uh, parking garage, which is just next door. Um, we'll talk about safety and security in a second, but there's a local coffee shop that opened up across the street recently. And then there's the Boom Grocery Market that is just across the park. And um, I'll do a quick little promo. They have uh, $1 uh, cherry and cream cheese pastries that are out of this world. It's the best dollar you're gonna spend all day. So um, again, it, it's a great area to be in. There's a lot going on. You have a park right across the street. So um, it, it's beautiful, especially in the summer with the beach on the other side. We'll go to the next slide. And so these are the type of apartments we have. We have studios, we have two person privates, but those are extremely limited. Um, we're looking at that in phase two to provide more of those apartments because we know students really love them. Um, all of the rooms, whether it's a studio, two person, four person, six person, are all $25 per day if you're a Stockton student. But again, the studios and two person apartments are very uh, limited. And then all of the entry into the apartments is based on the student's ID card. So please make sure you have your ID with you at all times, don't lose it, um, because that's how you get into the building, that's how you get past security, and that's how you get into the laundry room and your room. Um, so we just wanna make sure that students have that, but it's extremely convenient. I always have my ID card with me um, to get around. Um, so we'll go to the next slide. And then just safety. Um, again, when we built Atlantic City, 
we designed it with the students in mind. So the first folks you see are our safety and security um, folks. They patrol the academic building, the residence hall, and the parking garage. Um, we also have a police substation, uh, Stockton Police. Our police are fully sworn officers, and so they're able to respond um, as needed. And they practice community policing, and so it's not uncommon for them to be at events, to be talking to students, to get to know students. And so um, they're a great group of people to get to know, and they're always around, especially in the residence hall. Um, all of our COVID practices are still in effect as well. So unfortunately at this time, we're still not permitting any outside guests in the residence halls. We hope with uh, the state of New Jersey that that may change, but we look to them for that guidance. Um, we also have summer RAs, graduate staff, and residential life coordinators who live on site throughout the summer in the Atlantic City residence hall. And then we also have a residential life staff member like myself who's on call 24 hours, seven days a week. Um, I've gotten a little more gray in my beard due to being on call so much, but we're happy to provide support for students anytime we can at any hour of the day. And now I'm going to turn it over to Natisha Pearson to talk about internships and employment. Thanks, Steve. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I will be speaking as it was uh, stated about internships and employment and hopefully you all take advantage of our resources and services throughout the year. So in regards to the office of uh, CED, which is known as, we are broken up into career communities. So what that means is that we have four career advisors, including myself, and we work with uh, you guys as the students in identifying career exploration, assisting with resume writing, mock interviews, as well as internships and finding employment. So with the career community model, what, what happens is you, depending on what your major is, you have a specific point of contact, point person that um, is based on what your major. Also, we have something called a handshake, and I'm gonna go a little bit more into detail with handshake and show you what it looks like. So basically handshake is our centralized job board where you can look for full-time, part-time jobs, as well as internship opportunities. Also in regards to uh, scheduling appointments with us, talking about those career explorations or any topics relevant to your career, um, you have the opportunity to meet with one of us and schedule an appointment. So I am going to share my screen with you guys. There we go. So this is the Career Education and Development's Office website. And I highly recommend that you go to it to gain information and find out any you know, resources that we may have to offer you. As I said earlier, I think it's very helpful. So if you go into the students page specifically, it identifies the career communities that I spoke of earlier. So as you can see, if you're a health science major in medicine, um, that would be your particular career community if you're a business major, business, hospitality, and tourism. And if you click on the different career community icons, it will identify who your advisor is. I happen to be the career advisor specifically for that career community, health science and medicine. So you do have the opportunity to view different virtual trainings in regards to either resume writing, cover letter, job and internship searching, as well as interviewing for positions and conducting mock interviews. So you can either do the virtual training or if you choose to schedule something face-to-face -face in person or right now via Zoom, you have the opportunity to click and schedule that interview. Um, another thing that I want to address is our handshake. Our handshake is very similar to um, a monster career builder, which most of you probably are more familiar with, but handshake is specifically for Stockton students um, as well as alumni, and you have the opportunity to view internship opportunities, on-campus jobs, as well as full-time jobs as well. I'm just gonna share that very quickly with you as well. So it's, it's very important to establish an account. Um, for those of you who may be familiar with LinkedIn, the concept of setting up a profile page is very similar to, to LinkedIn, where you have a headshot of yourself, you identify what your major is, what your career interest um, is as well. So once you have an account set up, 
you have the opportunity to look up different jobs, as I mentioned, and those jobs can be on campus, off campus, as well as internship opportunities. So if you notice on this particular page for Handshake under jobs, you can actually look into specific internship opportunities um, that employers reach out and are looking for Stockton students, as well as you know, eventually alumni to look for. So this is definitely a resource to take advantage of. Another thing I wanna point out is an events page that is on Handshake. So any type of events, employer-related events, um, employers coming in doing information sessions through the summertime, throughout the year, as well as our career fairs, our career and internship fairs. These events are also included on Handshake. So if you wanted to get some information and prepare as to what the dates are um, for those events, you have the opportunity to view that on Handshake as well. Lastly, I just wanted to cover about internships. Um, I definitely um, advocate for you to take advantage of internship opportunities. And there is a distinction between internships. There's academic where your internships are for credit and obviously non-academic where you're just gaining experience only. You're not receiving any type of academic credit for those internships. Internships may also be paid as well as unpaid. It's all based on the employer but it's important to understand the distinction of the two. Um, academic internships, there's a procedure that needs to be done. There's paperwork um, that has to be established between Stockton and that employer. So that needs to be in place prior to you starting the actual internship so that at the conclusion, you can receive um, academic credit. As far as non-academic internships, again, this is something that you're you know, it can be possibly paid or not paid, but primarily it's for experience only. Both types of internships can be found by utilizing Handshake. Employers will post these opportunities for you to do so. But as I said, it's important just to understand the distinction between the two um, academic um, and, and non-academic internships. So feel free to utilize our services email us, um, any of the advisors, including myself, and reach out for anything career related. We're here and happy to help you. So thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Peterson. I went ahead and put in the chat for all of our participants, uh, the link to your website, um, which is also how they can uh, get into the Handshake system uh, by uh, selecting the search for jobs option, which is right in the center and the top of your, of your page. Okay, um, you know, one thing that we want to do before we uh, begin the Q&A is just to uh, remind everyone that on the summer website, which you can get to by going to stockton.edu forward slash summer 21, uh, this is where you'll find, uh, you know, answers to many of the questions that we're going to discuss right now, but also a lot of the information that was shared during this uh, session uh, from, you know, the academic side, from residential life, as well as, uh, you know, within the Bursar's office and financial aid, uh, directly on the Summer 21 page. So we highly encourage you to, uh, you know, visit those pages. Um, I do want to kick off some of the questions that we received by asking Dr. Greg first, and that is, you know, during normal times, are summer courses mostly online or are they in person? Um, mostly they are, they are still online. They've been uh, increasingly online over the last few years, just because of the convenience aspect. Obviously, uh, you know, obviously with the, the pandemic, they've become more so, and last year they were entirely online. Um, I think we would like to see more face-to-face -face in the future, but the trend is towards uh, more online courses. If you think about the Stockton student population, we're, we're, it's much more diverse in terms of the areas from the state in which you're coming from. So if you're up in North Jersey, you can easily take an online course, uh, whereas a face-to-face -face one is, is more difficult. So uh, enrollments tend to be a little bit better in, in the online courses. And so that's why I think we've, we've, we've moved in that direction. I think also with the pandemic, um, we've and last year we we're going entirely online. These courses are now very much uh, stronger than they, they, they were in the past. And so, you know, you're having more Zoom experience, more face-to-face face, 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 -to -face in terms of synchronous, at least. Um, and so they're much more personal than they used to be. And, 
Um, I think students are getting a lot out of them right now. So there, there is the opp opportunity for face-to-face, -face, but it's um, more difficult. Uh, the possibility is also that they're for uh, doing uh, independent studies with a sort of face-to-face -face component, uh, although generally that will be, at least until next year, I think, uh, online as well. So the answer is, uh, it, the summer is more online than um, during the remainder of the academic year, uh, but it's become increasingly online uh, because of the convenience aspect. So that brings us to a, a question um, for, for Dr. Heinrich. It, it says the daily Stockton bed, or is this for uh, Dr. Ratwanski? It says the daily Stockton bed is $25 for students. Do we have to pay $25 every day? Yeah, so it's, it's accumulation. So it's $25 per day. And so um, we, you know, if you stay for 30 days, we would do 25 times 30. And essentially the, the hard and fast rule is if your items are in the room and then you're in that space, then we would charge you for that. And so if you go home for a weekend or something like that, you're still occupying that space. So we would still charge you the $25 per day. And then additionally, there was another question about are all the rooms the same price? And yes, for the summer and the summer only, studios, two person private, the four person shared, four person private, and six person private are all $25 per day, which again is, is another deal. But again, the studio apartments and the two person apartments are, are very tough to come by um, because there's a small number, number of them. Uh, we have the most of the four person private apartments, but again, due to COVID and due to the number of applications, we try and space people out as much as possible, but it all depends on the number of applications we get. But traditionally, most students either only have one or two other roommates and um, the way, again, Atlantic City was designed, most of the rooms are private um, rooms where everyone gets their own individual room and they're the only one who has access to that room. So just to follow up, um, if, I, if I think I'm gonna be there for two weeks, I, I would then pay up front for those two weeks and then suddenly I decide to, I, I've, I've got another class that I wanna take or I'm, my internship's going on a little longer. How what do I just, how do I arrange that with you? We're very flexible. And so again, we ask for 30 day minimums, but again, we'll work with folks. And you know, I never want anyone to um, think of a question and not ask it. And so that's why we have the housing at stockton.edu email address. It's really easy to remember, but anytime you have a question about the number of days you would be saying, um, you can either reach out to your RA or email housing at stockton.edu. Uh, now that everyone has a phone with email and all their information on it, it's really easy to remember. Just um, pull up whatever uh, your email of choice is and then send us an email and we'll work with you to either adjust it if it's going to be less than 30 days or extend it if it's going to be more than 30 days. And then we also work with the bursar's office to let them know that an adjustment's been made. And then they'll work with you uh, depending on what kind of payment option you have as well. Great, thanks. Um, so, Dr. Greg, I have, I have a question for you. Um, you know, for transfer students, does how does Stockton's course registration system recognize transfer courses listed in Degree Works uh, that can be used as a prerequisite? They they should all be um, recorded in Degree Works. We have um, TREC, uh, which actually most universities in the country don't have, where pretty much every course is uh, included in, in um, uh, Degree Works, where, wherever you're c coming from, whatever um, institution. So generally speaking, we we recognize the prereqs. Now, where you think that that hasn't occurred. If you think that you have a prereq for a particular course, and maybe uh, you're not being able, you're not able to register for that particular course because of this discrepancy, you make a quick call or an email to um, the advising center. They are very fast to respond, uh, and they will help you out and make sure that you can get into that to that course. So that's that's the key. There is that almost everything will be recognized. But when it's not, um, you're you're doing us a service because if it's if it's something that you've come up against, 
it's probably somebody else is having the same thing. So by asking that question, by getting us to sort that out, the next student that comes along will also not have that, that problem. So please do pursue that. Um, but generally, if it, it, you're, you're no doubt correct that you have the prereq um, and uh, we can sort that out for you. So, um, so uh, Dr. Heinrich, if, uh, if a student is taking 20 credits, will they only have to pay for 16? So that's a good question. So although we have flat rate tuition during the fall and spring semester, uh, the summer uh, courses are billed per credit. Uh, and they are at a reduced rate compared to, you know, our per credit rates in the fall and the spring. Um, so if a student is taking, you know, 20 credits, which would traditionally be probably five classes, they would pay the per credit rate. And each course is about um, 17, you know, $1,752. You know, that's based on the, the per credit rate, because we did have another question, I believe, that was uh, asking, you know, what the cost was for a four credit class. Now, I think it's worth reminding everyone that if you uh, do reside in Atlantic City, as Dr. Redwanski mentioned, you do have the ability to take three courses for the price of two. So that discount, um, you know, would be applicable. And the refunds for, uh, you know, uh, getting that discount um, happen in mid-July, uh, you know, after the, what we call our summer census uh, uh, timeframe. So I have another question somewhat related to an earlier one. Uh, and, and here it's uh, significant because we've got somebody who's saying that they're not a current student at Stockton. So maybe they they have planned to come here or they're at some other institution um, and, and just want to take a summer course with us. It should be noted that all of our, our courses would be transferable. They, they wouldn't be something you just get a credit at Stockton and, and you, you couldn't take them elsewhere. You would be able to, you get a transcript from Stockton and it becomes a transfer student. But this particular student uh, wisely asks, you know, how do I, how do I apply? What do, what do I need to do if I'm not currently a student at Stockton? So that's an excellent question. So, uh, Students who are not currently matriculated as a uh, undergrad or graduate student at Stockton can still take summer classes by completing what is called our non-matriculated application. And there is a link on the summer page. Uh, it's also found on our uh, uh, student records page. Uh, and I'll put that link in the chat so that everyone has it, but it's uh, a very uh, quick and easy application. Uh, and then once you've completed it, you can go online and uh, register for a summer class. And here's another one for you, uh, Dr. Henrik. Um, if I want to take summer courses, can I apply for student loans for the summer? I think you mentioned this earlier, but it, it's worth reiterating. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, if you have a residual balance available from your federal direct um, subsidized or unsubsidized loans from the fall spring semester, you know that balance uh, can be applied uh, towards your uh, summer tuition and fee bill, uh, or you can apply for alternative loans or potentially even a parent plus loan uh, to use for the summer. Um, any students who had uh, you know loan eligibility remaining. Uh, we're notified by the Office of Financial Aid, but if you have any, you know, unique uh, questions about your own situation, you can reach out to the Office of Financial Aid either in person or over the phone through email uh, or schedule a, a, a Zoom appointment, and they will be glad to go over your specific situation with you. Um, so I have a question uh, for Natisha, and and that is, are, are students able to contact the Career Center to inquire um, for assistance in the summer, or is the center only available during the fall spring semesters? Great question. Uh, we are open in the summer. We're open year round. We do have summer hours based on the university's summer schedule. However, there's always someone available. Currently, because of COVID, um, our our, uh, shit, our uh, staff is staggered. However, that will soon be changing, but we are available to assist you. We're conducting interviews via Zoom. So if you go on the website that um, 
Dr. Heinrich put in the chat, you'll be able to schedule an appointment with one of our advisors. Great, thank you. Well, here's Dr. another question also for you um, regarding internships. Are internships only available to upper class people? Uh, and then also uh, the internships, whether some or not on degree works, it's titled as it's titled as hospitality internship. Is that an actual class um, or it gets checked off when you do an internship? So two separate questions there, but perhaps you could take them both. Okay, so the first one, yes, internships are available to upperclassmen as well as underclassmen. Um, one of the things what I talked about was the distinction between the academic versus non-academic internships. Typically for the academic internships where you're receiving credit, there may be some prerequisites and courses that you might have to take in order to do an academic internship, um, which is typically done for those upperclassmen, junior and senior students. But in regards to an internship that is non-academic, you're eligible to take that at any time during your academic career. And I, like I said, I encourage individuals um, to at least have one minimally, um, but if you can have more than one, take advantage of it. And I think the second question you were saying, um, every major is different in regards to the academic requirements. So if, if it's the hospitality, you might wanna check with your preceptor but typically there is a class that is associated with academic internships. In order to receive any kind of credit for an internship, there's a class component. And that's something, like I said, you can talk to your preceptor or someone over there. Um, Tara Marsh is um, a good person to speak to. She deals with the internships um, as well as uh, Donna Hauer. Um, for that particular major. So they would give you even more information and clarification, but yes, a, a, a class is connected to an internship in order for you to receive credit at the completion of it. So we're getting some uh, great questions here, um, some specific, some, some, some more general. Uh, that, that one, it's really important to realize that, you know, internships can be major specific, but there are also ones that are a link to uh, interdisciplinary minors and there's service learning possibilities. So once again, the emphasis is on preceptors to really help you out uh, in pursuing these uh, great offerings. So one question uh, for Dr. Rad Radwanski, uh, when will summer room preferences open up in the summer application? So the way we do that is um, any student who um, wants a specific room or is looking for it, we mostly will try and put people in four person privates, but if you wanna look for a studio or a two person private apartment, please just email housing at stockton.edu and let them know of your preference. Um, you can also always call 609-652-4697. And as for James Timothy, he's our assistant director of residential life and he's responsible for our housing assignments. And so he'll work closely with you to um, provide you the best option in terms of meeting your request, or if we're not able to meet your specific request, finding something that's similar that works for you as well. And, and Dr. Redwanski, just another follow-up question for you. Will there be uh, shuttles available during the summer? Yes. So our shuttles run uh, all year. Uh, Stouts, the company we use, is fantastic. They don't run on the same schedule as they would for the fall and spring. Uh, but they do run. Um, that also applies to uh, the food court in the Atlantic City building. We do have food options available, but it's a different schedule than what is traditionally offered during the fall and spring. Um, but in both cases for transportation from Atlantic City to Galloway, um, we do provide the shuttle service and there are food options available in the uh, Atlantic City academic building. And does that include meal plans or, you know, we had another question about meal plans. Are meal plans also available during the summer? Unfortunately not, but um, I was just digging for the, um, there's a link on the bursars page on how to add unrestricted to your account. And so you can add unrestricted funds to your account, which would then go again on your student ID. And then you'd be able to swipe that in the food court um, in Atlantic City, or if you were on the Galloway campus, and you wanted to use your unrestricted at the food court in the campus center, you could use that as well. So I'll put that link in the chat in uh, one second. So Dr. Heinrich, there's a question here 
Uh, somebody's obviously going through the process. The deadline was just now or yesterday for scholarships, I believe. Uh, if that person gets one, would they be able to apply uh, that money to the summer session as well? So the foundation scholarships uh, traditionally go towards the fall and spring semesters, or if the student was a recipient upon admission of a institutional merit scholarship, such as the presidential, the provost, the dean, or the Stockton award, those scholarships also only apply towards summer, and, I'm sorry, fall and, and spring tuition and fees. Um, so the only scholarships that a student may have available to them for the summer is if they um, have a private scholarship that they would be bringing with them externally. So Dr. Rudwanski, um, you know, this is a, a more um, individual specific question, but maybe we could take it, you know, because the others might be in a similar situation. Um, we have a student who's in a 12 month contract currently, uh, and they were told that they did not need to necessarily apply for some summer housing because they already have it. Uh, and they have a person in mind who they want to room with, uh, but they're not sure how to get the, them into a group uh, because they're not actively applying for housing. Sure, uh, great question. And so great that you're already in the 12 month contract. Students can sign up for a 12 month contract at any point during the year. Um, it really provides you great savings for winter housing and summer. And so if you've already done that, fantastic, good work. Um, in order, again, I may sound like a broken record, but James really is a great resource in our office. Um, you can always email housing at stockton.edu or ask to speak with James. Um, again, housing is a lot shorter than spelling all the vowels and consonants in my name. Um, but we have about six or seven people that monitor that email on a daily basis and they do a great job of responding. So if you have a friend, um, if you can get that friend's Z number or have that friend email housing at stockton.edu as well, just to confirm that they'd like to be your roommate, uh, that would be great as too. That would be great as well. And then again, um, depending on, you know, the number of applications we get, we, we do try and spread people out, especially, you know, during COVID to follow our COVID protocols. But um, please, like I said, feel free to call us. Uh, we have three offices one in Atlantic City, one in housing two and three, and then one in housing one, four, and five. And so any office will be able to help you, but uh, housing at stockton.edu is, is the easy email to remember, and we'll get back to you usually uh, sooner than 24 hours. It, yeah, it seems like there's a lot of um, interest in this in the summer housing. Yeah, I have three questions to, to uh, put you on the spot there. Um, I, I and I so, so clearly there's a lot of interest. So uh, hopefully students will follow up on this. But so uh, I, you may have mentioned this. I think you did. Uh, but let's reiterate this for for students. Uh, are you required to take a summer course in order to stay on the AC campus? No. Um, some students work on campus. Some students work in the area. Um, if you do, then you can obviously get the three for two discount if you are taking a class, but okay, you're not that, required. That was one of the other questions. Just to recap, if I live on campus, I can get three yep. courses at the price of two. And, and then one student here says, I have one class left that runs May through June and was wondering if that would apply to me if I wanted to stay at the AC campus. However, so, it is an online graduate, it's a graduate course. Yeah, so the, the three for the price of two is only available for undergraduate courses um, mm -hmm. at this time. And so it would not apply in that instance. Okay, thanks. But they can, they can still reside on campus if they're taking an online class during the summer. I, I, oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, the modality of your class doesn't uh, dictate whether you can uh, stay in the building or not. Again. Um, we'll, we'll always work with you. And again, you know, I, I kind of mentioned this earlier with Dr. Greg. Um, if, you know, for some reason your class goes longer or you need to stay longer or you need to leave sooner, we'll work with you and we'll certainly, you know, prorate that amount if you're leaving earlier. And then we'll certainly work with you to make sure the uh, additional days get on your bill as well. Uh, I think a, a student here also um, may have read some news reports about free parking available. Um, is that just for those taking classes, those who are living uh, residents, or is that 
uh, more broadly conceived? So <clears throat> that's throughout the whole year. Um, for our commuter students who uh, have classes in Atlantic City, we have a commuter parking lot, which is also next to the residence hall, which is monitored by our safety and security. And then for residential students, uh, we have the parking garage, which is also free. Um, during the summer, we convert the commuter parking lot um, into another type of parking, a paid parking lot for uh, folks visiting the beach. But commuter students would still get to park in the garage um, if they were having an in-person class in the summer. Um, but for, for all of our residential students, we offer you free parking in the garage. And um, we do share that garage with South Jersey Gas, but there's more than enough space. And again, um, there's two elevators to get you down and there's always someone in the building or doing patrol in the building. And, that's, and there's that's also cameras in the building. Isn't it? Because you know, to park at the, the beach in Atlantic City is pretty expensive on an hourly rate. Yeah. Other places. yeah so cool. you can save money by signing up for a 12 month contract. You can save money by taking uh, three classes for the price of two. You can save on laundry. Uh, you know, the utilities are included in the $25 a day rate. So there really is a lot of savings uh, in staying with us in the summer as opposed to staying off campus. And you can get ahead on your academic, academic career. So it's, it's all very, very good. Um, one last question. Where would the um, Q&A, sorry, where would the recordings of this summer session be, Dr. Heinrich? Um, so Good question, Dr. Greg. We're, what we're going to do is uh, once the uh, recording is closed captioned and edited, it's going to be posted on the summer page. So stockton.edu forward slash summer 21. Uh, Dr. Greg, with the first uh, session one beginning on May 17th, you know, what's the deadline to sign up for a summer course? Well, you could really... Uh, ca until the beginning of the class, we, we prefer it if you would be signing up a little earlier because we need to know whether the, the class is going to run and say it was a small class um, with you know eight to 10 students, the, the, the faculty member would need to be consulted to convert that into a tutorial, which wouldn't make any difference to the, to the class, but there are certain um, arrangements that we have to have to make in relation to it so it's good for us to know have a, a, a to know what the enrollment's going to look like uh, before the first day of class but technically you could uh, just like in the in the fall and the, the spring if there's a availability you can um, register for it now once the class has started because the courses have uh, shortened they're only six weeks or maybe 10 weeks uh, it's, it's more difficult to just suddenly join the co course a weekend. The professors have, uh, are often um, very skeptical about whether you'll be able to catch up and so forth. So you need to plan ahead. Um, obviously, you know, if you haven't made up your mind and, and you, you want to, we'll, we'll welcome you into the class up to the beginning of, of the, the session. But uh, the earlier you, you register, the better. It's, it's, it allows the professor um, more time to prepare for, for your presence in the classroom. Is that all? Um, okay, one last question. When will all the financial aid offers become available for summer 21? So financial aid offers um, will show as part of the student's bill when they go live next Friday, uh, April 2nd. Uh, so as long as the student is already registered for the summer, you know, their bill will go live. Um, if you register after next Friday, you know, then your bill will go live uh, within about a day. Uh, and then it might take a few more days after that for your financial aid, um, you know, to be packaged to show uh, on your account within the Go Stockton portal. Um, also, is there actually any uh, any housing available on uh, the Galloway campus, or is it all going to be Atlantic City? I think you may have mentioned this. But... So it's all in Atlantic City, and the reason for that is um, we do a lot of work in the buildings to get them clean, painted. Um, we replace the flooring, and we do have summer conferences, usually in a normal year, that we'd like to keep in Galloway as well. So all of our summer housing is offered in Atlantic City. So we have all of the students in one place, um, and that way all the resources are located in that location. And given the fact that Atlantic City is so popular <laughs> as, as a place to stay, 
uh, it wouldn't be worth just having, you know, a few rooms available in Galloway would be very, very difficult to arrange. Yeah, and, and again, um, during my experience as a student, not that I don't love the Pine Barrens, but the beach does have a certain appeal in the summer. <laughs> so one, one last question uh, was actually for me, which I don't think got fully answered. Someone wanted to know if they could register for 12 credits. We may have touched on this. Um, and, and the answer is you can. Now, we, what we wanted to emphasize, though, is uh, that if you're doing it in different subterms or different sessions, you're going to be doing fine if you're doing more than uh, 12 credits. However, do not try to do uh, all of these credits in one subterm. It will be very difficult to do it. And you'll, um, you may not do as well in the classes as you otherwise would. So we encourage you to take uh, more courses, but be sensible about the schedule to make sure you, there aren't too many conflicts. You haven't overloaded yourself. And again, that's one one reason to, to bring the preceptor into play because they can give you some good advice on that. They know how well you've done in other semesters uh, and can give you some good advice about, you know, how, how much of an overload you, you've you um, uh, taken on. And we have, you know, we only have about two minutes left, but we do have, I think, two quick housing questions that I want to uh, ask Dr. Redwanski. The first is, uh, if the students decide to go home for a weekend, do they need to uh, remove their belongings? And the second question is, uh, will Chris Galp still be available for people who may need to quarantine during the summer? So the answer to the first question is no, you do, if you're gonna leave for the weekend, you don't have to remove your items. Um, because again, we're the minimum is 30 days. And so if you're gonna occupy that room, um, you would, it's, you know, it's the same kind of concept as, you know, signing a lease or living off campus where if you didn't stay in your apartment off campus for a weekend, you would still pay rent for it. So it's the, it's the same concept. And then uh, the second question is a great question. Yes, uh, we'll still ut utilize Chris Gout for quarantine and isolation housing if we need to. Um, luckily, the past two summers with the amount of people we've who stayed on campus, they've done a wonderful job observing all of our COVID protocols. So we've had um, very low um, contact tracing and having to move students around due to COVID over the summer. And so um, we hope that's true again for our students who do a great job following all of our practices. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I wanna thank all of our participants for joining us today and uh, all the panelists as well for being here. Uh, these were very uh, great questions. And uh, I just wanna encourage everyone once again to visit the summer information page on the web at stockton.edu forward slash summer 21. And uh, if there are any questions that you're not able to answer, reach out to any of our offices and we're all here to help you. So thank you so much. And uh, you know we look forward to uh, having you join us this summer. Go Ospreys. <laughs>